Welcome back to our lessons on Solidity++. And in this video, which is lesson two, we're going to learn about how to deploy smart contracts onto the Vite testnet. And as part of that, we actually want to learn a bit about what Quota is. So Quota is Vite's anti-spam mechanism. The reason Vite has Quota is because all transactions in Vite uh, are actually free. They don't cost Vite to send a transaction. Um, but that would make it so that people could, you know, spam the network. And to prevent that sort of spam and wasting of resources, we you need a, some sort of mechanism to prevent that, and that's what Quota is. So any user can send a transaction by doing a small proof-of-work calculation. This small proof-of-work will provide a one-time use quota. Um, however, that's a little bit wasteful, and they still have to compute that proof of work calculation. And they have to do that the moment that they're trying to initiate that transaction. They can't store a proof of work calculation and then uh, send it later. That sort of mechanism works, but it makes it so that you have to, uh, you know, waste some energy doing proof of work calculations. And it also makes it so that your transactions are not as uh, quick as they would be without that proof of work. So. The alternative that Vite has implemented is you can actually get a buffer of quota by locking Vite. And so when you lock Vite, you get a certain amount of quota based on how much Vite you've locked. And that buffer of quota can be spent to uh, send transaction instantaneously. And while you use up your buffer of quota, over time that buffer replenishes itself. So you don't actually lose anything other than a temporary reduction in your ability to send more transactions. The VEAT that you lock for quota is not permanently locked. It's locked for a period of time, but after that period of time, which is three days, you can unlock that VEAT uh, that reduces your quota, but your stake in the network is not lost. You still have that VEAT. So I think the best way to do this is to look at a few examples of how quota is used and that will give you an idea of how it's needed to be used in smart contracts. So let's first look at a simple example. So we have two accounts. We have my account uh, and we have Bob's account. You know, Bob's my friend. I want to send some feet to him. And to do that, I just have to initiate a transaction. And like all transactions in feet, they come in pairs. So I initiate a transaction. And to get that initiated, I need to provide a small proof of work to generate a a one unit transaction of quota to initiate that send transaction. Bob also has to have some quota, and so he also has to do a small one-time uh, proof of work to generate one unit transaction uh, worth of quota to do a receive transaction. And that allows, once the snapshot block producers confirm that transaction, we will get a deduction of 1,000 feet from my account and a addition of 1,000 feet to Bob's account. And that works However, you have to do those proof of work calculations, and if possible, we, we want to avoid that for the reasons we talked about earlier. So how do we do that? Well, let's look at the second example where we send with quota. So in this case, I now have a balance of 10,000 V, and I've locked 1,340 V, which provides 10 unit transactions of a quota buffer. So I have this max quota of 10. So now when I send a transaction, I just use one unit transaction from my quota buffer and initiate that send transaction. Now Bob will initiate a receive transaction, but since he currently doesn't have quota, he has to do the proof of work. And so whenever he gets around, he'll do his proof of work and confirm that transaction. Once the snapshot block producers pick this up, they will confirm both of those transactions and we get the transfer of funds as we wanted. And you'll see that I have nine uh, quota now, but over time that buffer will replenish until it's max again. And eventually I'll have this 10 unit transactions again. We can actually continue this. So if both me and Bob have uh, some quota, in our third example, I've locked 1,340 VEAT to provide 10 unit transactions of worth of quota. Bob has locked 134 VEAT for exactly one unit transaction worth of quota. And now if I initiate that send transaction, it deducts quota from my account. His Bob's receive transaction deducts quota from his account. And 
the transaction gets confirmed by the snapshot block producers, and finally it will regenerate this quota over time. Now, these are pretty simple transactions so far, and if you're familiar with the Beat Network, you already are, are very familiar with them. Um, but let's now look at using quota with contracts. So um, how do you interact with a contract? Well, if the contract is already deployed, then there's some Vite address associated with the contract, and it looks very much like you know any other account on the Vite network. And if I want to do a contract call, I send a message to that contract, and doing that send message will actually take some quota. And so it will get deducted from my quota buffer. But the contract doesn't have quota, and the contract doesn't have proof of work, so we have a problem that transaction actually just gets stuck. So I've done a send transaction, but there is no paired receive transaction. And since contracts can't do proof of work, that will just sit there. Now, how do we fix this? So let's say that this contract was actually Bob's contract. And he, you know, Bob wants this contract to be available so that people can use it. And the way that Bob can do that is by locking some of his VEAT for another address. In this case, Bob wants to lock his VEAT and provide quota for the contract. So right now, Bob has 134 VEAT locked for himself, but he also has 268 VEAT locked for the contract. And so he had provided one quota, one unit transaction worth of quota for himself and two unit transactions worth of quota for this contract. And now when I have this uh, contract call that I've used my own quota. The contract can also use its quota and that gets deducted from its account. After that period, after the, the quota regenerates, then people can interact with that contract again. And if there's any pending transactions, those transactions will end up getting confirmed later. Now, the nice thing about this system is that uh, the contract doesn't actually have any VEAT in it. It doesn't have any VEAT locked in its own account. Bob locked the VEAT for that contract. And if Bob decided that that contract is, uh, you know, maybe it's out of date or he just doesn't want to support it anymore, he can withdraw that VEAT, unlock it, and uh, the contract will now no longer have any quota provided for it. This makes it so that, you know, that Bob's VEAT is not wasted on this contract. When he's done with it, he can get his quota back. Okay, so that's the basic idea of interacting with a contract. When it comes to development, you need to lock V to provide quota for your contracts. How do we do that and how do we do that safely? One strategy is to have two wallets. You have a development wallet and a personal wallet. And you, if, you're, if you're using V already, you probably have a personal wallet. That's Android or iOS account or maybe a Ledger hardware wallet that has V software on it. And those have your private keys and they're safe maybe the majority of your VEAT uh, and other, other funds that are stored on that wallet. You can then use that wallet to provide quota for other accounts like contracts and like a development account without actually uh, putting any of your own VEAT at risk. It's just locked for quota, but you can always unlock it later. The other half of this is having a, a development wallet. And when you launch the, uh, the Solidity++ debugger, you automatically generate a wallet. And that's the development wallet that I'm considering right here. And since these keys are stored in plain text and just available on your computer, you don't want to store a large amount of VEAT on those wallets. Finally, since the development wallet is probably what you're going to be using to deploy contracts, you may need to send it a small balance of VEAT, but just give it 10 VEAT or so to deploy a contract. Don't give it you know, don't give it a significant fraction of your funds in case that wallet gets compromised. So this is our Hello World program from lesson one, and we want to deploy this onto the testnet. The first thing we want to do is to get our personal wallet set up and have it acquire some test feet. Then we can send a small amount of test feet to our debug wallet, our developer wallet, and have our developer wallet deploy a contract. Then we can use our personal wallet again to lock some VEAT for quota and provide that quota to both our contract and to our developer wallet. So let's get started. First, we're going to open up our debugger. And now we can go into the settings menu and 
let's I'm just going to create a new mnemonic and save it so that we have a fresh clean slate and now if we go back to our debug menu we can see that we have you know we have a new address now and if we check our test net we can see that we currently don't have any balance here so our debug wallet is good to go now we just need to set up our personal wallet to do that you're going to want to open up your Vite app on your mobile device so you should already have the Vite app downloaded so open that now and we're just going to create a brand new account if you already have an account you should open that so I'm creating an account I'm going to call it personal and my password will be test 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 again and you can see that's my password and you should read through the terms and conditions and I'm going to create a wallet now now since I'm just using this for testing I'm not backing up my seed phrase but you should absolutely back up your seed phrase when you create an account and now we are in our personal account so now that I have this I want to show you how to get it operational on the devnet so the first thing you want to do is open up the settings and go to the node settings and in here you'll see that there's node settings for the Vite network add custom node and type in https colon slash slash B U I D L and make sure that you don't autocorrect it. It's spelled buildle, and we're buildling dot vite dot net slash gvite slash http and then hit confirm and select that as your network. This will set up your phone to the uh, to the test network and it will be able to uh, confirm transactions for you. Now that we're, we've done that, we can go back, 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 and now we're ready to uh, use Vite Connect to connect to the web interface. So to do that, we're going to want to go to buidl.vite.net, and I understand switch accounts and it will ask you to scan a QR code with your Vite Wallet app. So I'm going to open up my the scanner in the top right corner and then scan and it will ask me to confirm the link and I'll hit confirm and that will pop open this menu. So now that we're in here we can go to our wallet and copy this Vite Connect address and once you have this address, this is the this is our personal wallet address, and we want to send some test feet to it. So how do we get test feet? To do that, you're going to want to open up Discord. And if you go to Discord and go to the Vite channel and scroll through the users, you can find a user called Faucet, and it's a bot. And if you send a message, exclamation point, send space and then paste your address and just press enter we're going to send some test feet to that address and if we check our Vite wallet we just received 10,000 feet so we now have test feet on our personal wallet now we want to send this test feet to our debugger wallet just enough so that we can deploy a contract so let's get our wallet address for the test net this is our debugger wallet and we're going to do an on-chain send and the recipient is going to be our uh, our debug wallet our developer wallet and we're going to send let's send a hundred that will allow us to deploy contracts ten times not too much and send funds Let's just run POW, proof of work. We'll do a quick calculation. And now it should have sent that transaction. Now we've sent 100 Vite to our debugger wallet. And if we check, the, um, we did get a send transaction. Um, but the reason that we don't have any balance here is because this wallet is actually unable to confirm any balances because the debugger doesn't actually have the ability to run proof of work. So we actually need to provide some quota to actually have this um, 
to have this uh, transaction go through. So we go back to our Vite wallet. This is our personal wallet. And we're going to go down to this menu here. And this is our quota management section. And we want to provide quota for our debug account. So if we go back here, get our debug address, and we're going to provide some quota for this debug address. So the deduction address is our personal wallet, and the recipient address is our debug wallet. And we're going to submit staking with, let's give ourselves uh, 2,000 VEAT as a uh, quota. And we'll get another confirmation on our app. Again, we have to type in our password. And now we've uh, so successfully staked for our um, debug wallet. So if we go back here, we can see that we just received, we have this received transaction. So we successfully now have Vite on our account. We can now deploy a contract. And since we had quota staked for us, we were able to deploy that contract. And now we have our contract that's deployed on the test net. Great, now we just need to figure out how to use it. So we need to re remember that we have to provide quota for this contract. So if we copy this address, we can now go back to our personal wallet and again, provide some quota for our contract. So again, let's give our contract, it doesn't need a ton of quota, but we can give it a thousand just to be generous. Submit staking. And again, we're gonna confirm this on our uh, wallet and now we have successfully uh, sent some quota to our contract so now our contract has been provided quota we can try to use it so let's uh, just try it out by sending some feet to ourselves so we'll copy our own address and we'll send say 10 feet to ourselves and we're going to call that so what we've done if we, is we've set up a personal wallet and a debug or developer wallet uh, deploy a contract and have that contract function on the testnet so that's everything i wanted to cover today thanks for listening and i'll see you next time